Hello. In this module, I'll be shedding some light on a very interesting subject, which is organizational behavior. I'll be starting with the definition, nature, elements, and different approaches to organizational behavior. But first of all, let's understand why do we have to study organizational behavior? What is the importance of OB? Let's first understand or and read some nice quotes given by great thinkers like Sam Walton, who is the founder of Walmart Group of Companies or the biggest retailer in the world. He said that individuals don't win, teams do. Peter Drucker, who is a very famous management thinker, said, the organization is above all social. It is people. D. Hawk who is the founder of Visa Credit Card, said, an organization, no matter how well designed, is only as good as the people who live and work in it. And another good quote was, we don't manage people, we manage behaviors. So all these quote, quotes make us think, what is the importance of OB? What is organizational behavior? Organizational behavior basically provides a set of tools that allow people to understand, analyze, and describe behavior in organizations. And it also provides a set of tools that allow managers to improve, enhance, or change work behaviors so that individuals, groups, and the whole organization can achieve their goals. Now let's define organizational behavior. Now very good books like uh, written by authors like Stephen Robbins and Fred Luthans are if you want to study from that it, it is excellent to read organizational behavior from these books. So I've taken two definitions from these uh, two books. So in the opinion of Stephen Robbins, OB is the study and application of knowledge on how people act and behave in an organization for the purpose of applying such knowledge towards improving an organization's effectiveness. And according to Fred Luthans, OB is concerned with understanding, predicting, and controlling human behavior in an organization. So these two great thinkers have emphasized on how people behave or the behavior of groups or the behavior of humans that basically helps in understanding what organizational behavior is and how do we define it. Thus, to summarize, OB is the study of factors that affect how individuals and groups act in organizations and how organizations manage their environments. Now, let's look at the nature of OB. First of all, it is multidisciplinary in nature, which means it is not a pure subject it draws its knowledge from different subjects like psychology, sociology, anthropology, and many more. It is an applied science. It is not a pure science. It applies various researches to solve the organizational problems related to human behavior. It is also a normative science. In the case of pure science, there is only cause-effect relationship. But in case of OB, which is a normative science, it deals with what is accepted by individuals and society engaged in an organization. It has a humanistic approach to it. That means it deals with the thinking and feeling of human beings. And last nature of OB is that it is a total system approach. That is, it integrates all the variables affecting organizational functioning. Now let's look at the elements of OB or the different levels of OB. At the basic level or the individual level, we discuss different issues like personality, perception, attitudes, motivation, job satisfaction, learning, values. At the group level, we talk about group dynamics, group conflicts, communication, leadership, power and politics. And at the third level or the organizational level, we talk about structure, organizational culture, organizational change and organizational development. So all these topics will be f further uh, carried and covered in my next few modules. 
Now let's look at the approaches to OB. Now at, we can study OB in four different ways or there are four different approaches to OB. First one is at the human resource approach. Next is the contingency approach. The third one is the productivity approach. And the fourth is the systems approach. Now let's look at these four approaches in a greater detail. The first one is the human resources approach. When we talk about human resources, we recognize that people are the main resource of the organization. They should be developed towards higher level of creativity, competence and higher level of satisfaction. In the earlier approach or traditional approaches, managers they used to decide what the employees should do and they just monitored closely their performance just to ensure that the task they have given is accomplished. But in human resource approach, the role of manager changes from structuring and controlling to more of supporting his employees. Next is the contingency approach. Contingency means choosing a particular thing according to the situation. It says that methods or behaviors which work in work effectively in one situation may fail in another. You can't have a problem and a solution in organizational behavior. You have to work it out. There are different methods, different uh, researches done in organizational behavior. One uh, research might fit into your organization or one method might fit work in your organization. Another one might not work. So you have to find out which will work more effectively in a particular situation. Results differ because situations differ. No two situations are same and so the results will also differ. So the manager's task here is to identify which method will in a particular situation and at a particular time will best contribute to the attainment of organization's goal. So that is the main manager's task. It discourages the habitual practice of universal assumptions about methods and people. You can't apply the same methods in different situations. It might just fail. And the contingency approach, it is more interdisciplinary, more system oriented and more research oriented than any other approach. The third method or the third approach is the productivity approach. It says that there is a ratio of output to input which measures the organization's effectiveness. How much output you are getting from how much input you are putting in. It determines the manager's efficiency in optimizing the resources of the organization. How well the resources are used in the organization. Organizational behavior decisions involve human, social and economic issues. And so productivity is a significant part of these decisions. One humoristic cartoon I got, so I just uh, thought of applying it here, where the manager says that I have identified our productivity problem. We installed faster computers, but we forgot to install faster computer operators. So you can see how the behavior of people are affecting the productivity. Last is the systems approach, which says that OB as a unified and perf uh, purposeful system and it is composed of interrelated parts. That means if one part has a problem, the other parts will also have a problem and will not be able to attain their goals. This approach gives managers a way of looking at the organization as a whole, which includes person, whole group and the whole social system. So different parts make up the entire organization. The systems approach tells us that the activity of any segment of an organization affects the activity of other segment. And a systems view should be the concern of every person in an organization. And then only we can have a unified system that works very well. Hope you had a good learning from this particular module. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.